come back. Where are you going? Welcome back guys, I hope everyone's doing well. So today, I'm out flying and we're gonna be testing something new. The DJI Motion Controller 2 with the Mini 3 Pro. Yeah, I think I got all that right. So here we go, we've got the Mini 3 Pro there. We've got the new Motion Controller 2, which, yeah, some people have made jokes that this looks a little bit like something. <laughs> anyway, we won't go into that. But we've also got the Goggles 2 here as well, not the Integra, so you know you can obviously get this as a package with the new Integra Goggles, but I've got the Goggles 2, um, and yeah, I'm not gonna be upgrading for the sake of that. Because there's not really much point, these are more fully featured than the Integras anyway. So the regular viewers of the channel know that I fly FPV, proper acro, full mode, you know, do all the tricks, all that sort of stuff. Um, so I'm actually well acquainted with flying drones using the sticks. Sticks meaning these, like the actual joysticks. So why go over to something like this, which is kind of, I imagine, a bit like flying, you know, using kind of some sort of games console um, remote, or like an old joystick, that kind of thing. But basically there seems to be a lot of development happening in the consumer drone sort of sector at the moment. Because I think what it is, people have just got bored of just kind of, you know, normal DJI drones or camera drones that just fly around and just give you nice stable shots. You know, people want a bit more. They want to get closer to the action and stuff. So, you know, DJI have brought out the Avata, which gives you a kind of FPV experience. You can get closer to the objects. You can kind of, you can crash easier, basically. And to get those FPV shots, like the sort of swooping, you know, getting close to the action, you, you normally have to do this with goggles because it's so much easier to actually see what you're doing um, rather than looking at a screen. You can't really do it with a screen. So that was the idea. They've actually now enabled you to use the goggles with like a consumer camera drone, like, you know, one of the kind of entry level drones, really. Um, in the goggles which is kind of kind of mad right so enough waffling on i'm going to get going and um we're going to go and try and test this out and see what what it's actually like so i'm going to fire up the goggles first and um, turn on the goggles um get that strap in the right place the controller i've actually turned the controller on you have to bind all this right at the beginning um it's not too difficult to do you just hold down the button of the drone um and basically just hold it down for like three five seconds or something it starts beeping and then you compare it to the goggles once it's paired to the goggles you can then just do the same on this remote just hold down the power button and it will just link to it no problem at all so this we need to turn on turn on the drone i haven't turned this controller on either because it doesn't seem to work with that the first last time i tried it, it didn't you probably could watch the footage back on this after which would be quite nice so you don't even need your phone in the equation at all right okay so we're recording basically to start off you just press this lock button here twice and then the drone should start it hasn't right guys i don't know what was going on it just wasn't taking off for some reason so i had to just reboot everything so basically the way you start is you just double tap this lock button and then the motors start and then to take off you literally just hold the button the lock button again to take off it tells you in the screen it's really 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 intuitive it tells you on the uh, on the goggles so that's now taken off there and you can see now we've kind of gone into like the motion mode so this circle here is my motion controller which is pretty cool you can just like kind of move that around left to right and that's basically how you control like suppose like the yaw of the drone and then the gimbal obviously like that but it makes for quite an interesting sort of you know system you can pan around and you can do all this now to basically move forward so you have to make sure you don't move your, move your hand whilst you're doing this um to move forward you just pull the trigger in so you just literally just pull the trigger here um and off you go albeit a little bit slowly because it's got the motion sort of detection on I've actually turned the volume down on the goggles a bit because it was kind of, it, yeah, when you're lower than sort of a meter, it kind of starts doing, you know, it starts make it beeping like crazy. But I mean, how cool is this guys? Look, you can just literally pan around here. And I mean, you know, this took me a long time to learn how to kind of, you know, do proximity flying through, um, you know, goalposts and things like that. And now I'm just literally doing it with, you know, like a basic, like a Wii controller. So you can kind of cruise around here. You can maintain your altitude, lovely. I've got motion, um, I've got obstacle avoidance on here. So 
you know, I, I'm confident that I'm not going to hit anything. Look, if I just literally head towards, say like this bench here, there's no one on it, is there, no? If I head towards this bench here, look, the drone literally just stops. Well, well, it did for a second. And if I want to go backwards, then I can just pull back on the, on the joystick there, on the trigger, and it kind of goes backwards. So, you know, really intuitive. You can point up in the air, you can go up, and you can just up, nicely climb, you know, and whilst you're actually sort of flying, you can kind of, you know, move around and kind of pan over this. I mean, you would not be able to do that with a Mini Pro. <laughs> you know, um, it, it just wouldn't be possible, would it? Like, but now, you can do it. So, we, you know, we're flying over water here. I'm confident I'm not going to actually kind of crash into the water because we've got the obstacle avoidance on the on the bottom. I can climb up. You know, no FPV skills needed for this at all. And then what we can do here, look, is we can just kind of have a look at this boat. We can get in a bit closer to this um, this nice barge here, and we can bank round here a little bit, and then we can just literally just use the motion controller there to get a nice smooth footage of that boat. Amazing, isn't it? It is so good. You can raise up high directly by, I thought you could, by pushing the joystick, yeah, you can. So you can kind of push the joystick up on the controller um, to get, you know, a look at the, um, look at the thing. I think I went a little bit sideways then, but so yeah, you can sort of pan around. That's what I really like about this because you haven't got to worry about that gimbal control. You can just literally just use this motion controller to, you know, effectively control your gimbal. Oh, we're a little bit low, we're a little bit low, we're a little bit low. <laughs> so yeah, raise up a bit, follow this bird. Let's follow this bird around. Uh, how cool is that? You see, at the moment, I'm in normal mode, so I'm not actually flying that fast, but it's actually, this is quite difficult to do with FPV, like actually chasing something, but on this, you can do it quite easily because you've got like a, oh, I won't bother him anymore. But yeah, we, you know, you can do it quite easily. Look at this, flying down this, this path here. I've always got the temptation to sort of like hold my hand, my arm out. I need to sort of get get in the habit of kind of tucking it in because it doesn't half make your arm ache after a little while. Right, so now you've seen this, this is in manual mode obviously with obstacle avoidance on and you know for the most part you probably want to keep that on because it's it's just a lot safer. So now what we can do now is we can flip this into sport mode. Will it let me do that? Yeah it will. And now you've got no obstacle avoidance but you're just going to be able to go a lot faster. See that is that's a lot faster. Close to the ground. And then you can kind of cruise up here. And go do that that shot of that tree. I like that. That was quite cool, wasn't it? Over there. Now this is the flying field here. So I'm gonna sort of bank round. You know, it gives you it's really, really intuitive guys. It does sort of like carve sideways a little bit when you do that, but you know, it is using a lot of flight computer wizardry to do this. So, you know, you've got to expect it's not going to be exactly like what you'd get with FPV. But again, to be doing this with a camera drone is pretty dang impressive. I'm not going to lie. It's pretty impressive. And, you know, you guys, if you don't fly FPV, you probably have half a fighting chance of being able to do something like this, um, you know, without actually even oh well, we've got a bit of a break up there now i don't know if this is actually in proper fcc mode because my original rc has had an rc has had the fcc mode uh enabled even though we're in a ce zone it's just safer you know to be using that better power level um but yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it is because that seems a little bit, the signal doesn't seem particularly brilliant um, out there. But, you know, you can get some really nice smooth shots with this, which would actually be quite a lot more difficult to do with an FPV drone. 
it's a lot smoother. You're not going to be able to do any loops or anything like that, but you know, pretty good. So we've got auto return to home about to happen, which I don't want. Um, so I'm going to just hit the mode. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, guys, we don't want that to kick in. Stop. Battery's dropping quite quick now, actually. So I'm going to, I'm going to sort of head back. Now, what I do like is the fact you can do this. So when you're sort of heading in, if you're flying in a really sort of tight space, um, I was just sort of saying on the screen there. If you're flying in a really tight space and you want to land, it's often difficult to do it because basically you don't know where you are. So you can just use the motion to just go down and just have a look. See where, you, where, where am I, what am I going to do? You know, and then you can just literally just come towards where you need to come to. Um, have a look down, make sure it's clear, and then you can basically just hit that return to home, not return to home, just hit the land button. And then it kind of asks you if, if it's clear, so you, you, can, you can't do another check actually, it won't let you. But just push the button again, and so you've got to just press and hold the lock button down again, and then it goes down. I mean, that is cool guys, really cool. And what's mad about that is I've just had so much fun just flying around. I've just literally lost myself completely in, in terms of how much time has gone. And I've just rinsed through that battery really quick. So <laughs> I must have been having fun. Yeah totally binned it. So that is what happens guys if you try and fly a camera drone like an FPV drone. Eat just just don't just don't bother it's just not worth it but if you're going to do it do it just do it in normal mode and keep it in normal mode don't ever put it in sport mode because you're going to bin it and look now i've got a 300 quid repair job to replace this gimbal fortunately none of this plastic's broken i've lost a couple of side covers here um and obviously this top bit's popped up but i've examined it closely unfortunately it needs a completely new gimbal and camera um setup because we've actually broken a couple of these like micro wires so the camera doesn't even work um, if the camera worked, then I was kind of half tempted to just kind of rip this apart and put it on a carbon frame and just <laughs> have a bit of fun and see what happens. But, but I am going to rebuild this. It's just basically like a new camera and gimbal assembly. But unfortunately, they're like 300 quid, 300 pounds for this camera and the gimbal, um, which is like half the cost of the drone. Basically, all you've got to do is take the top panel off, um, unconnect this loom, this wire loom here and then basically just yeah put the new one on and then there's a couple of python scripts i think you've got to run um sounds complicated but i don't think it is that bad um to actually recalibrate the camera um i don't know if any of you guys have done it let me know if you've got any tips but i've, I've watched a couple of videos of people that have done it. it doesn't seem too hard to do and then we can get this little bad boy up and running for one of my future trips which is the main reason i got it and now it's smashed <laughs> So, what do we think of this thing, apart from the fact it's the reason why it's... No, it's not the reason why I smashed that drone. The reason I smashed the drone is because of me just being stupid. But I think this was interesting, and a lot of us were quick to judge, like especially like those of you that fly FPV, you're going to be like, oh, what's he talking about? Uh, you know, I was quick to judge this thing, um, this controller, but I think it's got, it's got its uses, because I just connected this to my Avata. Check this footage out. Make your own mind up about this and let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, do the usual stuff, and I'll catch you next time.